This year, the Uganda Mathematics Society held the 40th Mathematics Teachers Convention. And to make matters more interesting, a lawyer was in invited to be the keynote speaker. This is none other than one of the world's fastest mathematicians. This guy is amazing. He will just tell you anything about you with just a single number that you're going to figure out, of course, upon his request. So today we are more than humbled to have him at the Caferdo TV studios. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Daval Bhatia all the way from India. Yes, uh, Daval, I, I hope you don't mind if I call you by your first name. Oh, yes, absolutely, okay. How are you today? Awesome, awesome. How uh, is your stay in Uganda so far? Oh, it's such a wonderful country. I, I am thinking of calling my family to shift here forever. <laughs> <laughs> you should, you should, <laughs> you should. Yes. You know, it's amazing, like I've said, for a lawyer, first of all, to be mentioned when it comes to anything to do with mathematics. And again, to make matters more interesting, you turn out to be one of the world's fastest mathematicians. How is it possible? T tell us a bit about you as a lawyer and how it links with mathematics. You see, uh, I was very lazy in school, you know. Mm. I, I, I used to hate doing long calculations. Mm. And uh, I, I believe lazy people are a bit smarter. So I used to invent my own techniques to get the answer faster because I didn't want to do those long calculations. And in the process of inventing faster and faster methods, I realized that there were certain methods which the world didn't know, which I had invented. Okay. Some which I had learned from, read from books by, written by other authors. And so, uh, although I graduated as a lawyer, I took it as a mission to teach these shortcuts to people. And uh, perchance I happened to write a book uh, and the book became a bestseller in India and it became a bestseller in many countries of the world. And I understand you wrote this book at the age of 17? Yes. Only I, at 17? Yes, I was 17 years old when wow. I wrote the book. I wow. was a, a, a student in under, undergrad college. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what was the book about? So the book is called Vedic Mathematics. Okay. And it teaches you how to do math techniques like fractions, decimals, percentages, squares, square roots in a very fast manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Um, t t tell us something about your family life. Are you, are you a family man? Are you married? Yes. I see so many ladies <laughs> in the audience uh, desiring an answer for that. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm married. Uh, my wife is also a lawyer. Wow. So now you can understand what happens in the house. <laughs> First of all, she's a wife. Uh -huh. She wins every argument. Uh, yes. And over and above that, she's a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. So my chances are zero. <laughs> and I've been blessed with a small, cute baby girl. Wow. She's now three and a half year old. Amazing. And she's showing uh, some good signs towards numbers. Mm. So I hope she turns out to be good too. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. And, and you know, amazingly, when you talk about her being good at mathematics, it, it drives me to this... Uh, issue that I was told by the Uganda Mathematics Society that you ended up uh, paying your own bill to come all the way from India, uh, your housing and facilitation. I mean, at some point, I feel this is too generous of you. And um, when I was doing my research, it came out that you've traveled the whole world, almost the whole world, doing exactly this. Free of charge, you are giving back to community by teaching mathematics. H how is that possible? You see, you see uh, I have a uh, fairly good legal practice. Mm -hmm. God has been kind to me. So yes. that gives me my bread and butter. Plus, I have a lot of books that I've written. Mm -hmm. So the royalties are coming from all over the world. We have a few apps, the CDs and the DVDs, which give me good royalty. Mm -hmm. And I realize that the UMS is doing a great job. They are doing fantastic work throughout the year. But because of challenges of geography and technology, they are not able to generate the right kind of funds. And so, because they are doing good work, I thought uh, I should chip in somewhere, you know, wherever best I can. Mm. So they've been very kind. They give me good accommodation and food. Flight, of course, my foundation took over. And I'm very happy that I've come here because the people here are so nice. They are, they are so hospitable. But uh, the, the knowledge part is lacking. So hopefully in the, in the months to come, I'll be sharing some of my best techniques and secrets to the UMS and to the people of Uganda. Wow, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and that, of course, I imagine uh, that's the audience saying they really appreciate the offer. And the next time you do come in the country, of course, we're going to be uh, ready to welcome you. Now, the Guinness World Record. What, what is it about? And, and how does it feel to be a Guinness World Record holder? Being here with you is amazing for me. I feel like I, I want the ground to swallow me. I'm hosting a Guinness World Record holder. Thank you. What Thank does you. it mean and what is it for? So uh, I got the Guinness World Record for teaching the maximum number of students. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a class of more than 1,300 students wow. nonstop wow. for seven hours. Wow. And these were very young students. Mm -hmm. uh, they were aged 11, 12, and 13. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge for me was to hold their attention okay. 
for seven hours without any break. I mean, except for the washroom break, which was adjacent to the auditorium. Mm -hmm. They were given the water cups. Yes. They had to sit for seven hours without moving. Oh, wow. And when you have young teenagers who are so fidgety, you know, they have uh -huh. such a yeah. short Unsettled, attention span yes. uh, mm. in the age of social media and so many gadgets around. We were able to pull it off. Mm. So we solved some 650,000 questions in that time span. Wow. And that is how it became a part of the Guinness World Record. Let's give him a Thank hand you. Up. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the Uganda, the 40th annual math teachers convention in Uganda uh, had you as the keynote speaker. Right. And in your address, I was there. Hope, uh, thank God I was there. And I, I got to see quite some amazing things from you. You, you at some point were able to cube and squares mm. easily, even faster than a calculator. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I thought this was quite amazing. I'm, go I'm going to give you an opportunity mm. to, to impress our audience. Uh, and of course, we have, uh, we have a flip chat with us and a, and a marker yeah. that I'm hoping you're going to use them. But yeah. quickly, sure. off it, off okay. it. Okay. Give me the square, the, 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 the square root. Uh, okay, I need to differentiate square root and square of uh, 89. Let's start with 89. Okay, so 89 times 89 would be 7,921. I need someone in the audience to get a calculator and prove that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we can even go further. 7,921. Okay, the same number if I multiply again by 89, uh -huh. my answer will be 704969. Seven hundred and four thousand. Okay, okay. do we have someone with a calculator in the audience? Yes, it's <laughs> Is that true? Oh my God, it's true. It's it's amazing. Thank you. Um, what about, uh, let me give you another number. Okay. I, I'm going to pick a number from, uh, from b between 1 and 100 randomly. I, I, I like the number 63. What can you do with the number 63? Okay. So 63 times 63 mm -hmm. should give us 3969. And 3969 <laughs> times 63 again uh -huh. should be giving me 250047. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, it's amazing. We can normally say I'm into that. Uh, okay, before I give you the, the flip chart, I just want to test you one more time. Okay, yeah. um, let me pick a number between uh, uh, one and a thousand. It seems it's easier for you between one and a hundred. Can you give me the square of um, 551? Okay, uh, that'll take me some time. Okay. Faster it, it should be three zero three six zero one. <laughs> <laughs> and imagine how he says it. That will take me some time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. That's amazing. Let's give him a hand clap as he comes to the flip chart to impress us some Thank more. You. Um, um, uh, uh, Daval, we've got for you a flip chart, and um, I, I really think. One of the things that I noticed from the conversion was I wasn't really a, a poor, 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 poor at mathematics as I thought. And like you said, when you were studying back, uh, back in your school, you had a difficulty with mathematics as a subject, and you had to figure out simpler ways of doing it. But our education system, with all due respect to the people who have made it, uh, has been designed in such a way that it, 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 you, you're either good at what you're doing or you actually think you can never do it. And, and the, the, the goodness is based upon a teacher's mark. Now, what if the students were actually able to go out there and figure out simpler methods of understanding what their teachers try to give them like you did, just like you did? And um, I want to think it would make us better students, number one, better researchers if we are out there to research something. For example, here at Cafero Foundation, we aim at facilitating research towards innovations, you know? So at some point, you are a mathematical inventor, innovator, you get it? So we would like you to inspire our audience to show us that we can actually love mathematics. These numbers are not as alien as we thought they were. I would like to give you a minute or two to impress us with your magic uh, on, the, on the whiteboard. Yes, and you know, you said it very rightly, you mm. know, the, the work that Kafira Foundation is doing yes. with innovation is really, really appreciable. Thank you so At much. At the same time, UMS. I'm not saying this, you know, just to keep you happy, mm. but when I came here and I saw the kind of work that you people are doing mm. and UMS is doing, I think society needs to be more proactive 
receptive yes sir and 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 more open mm. uh, to this kind of work which mm. is out of the box mm. which is innovative and which is the need of the hour mm. right so mm. yeah let's Thank go ahead so and much. i'm going to all right please show you show you something there we go on, on the flip chart uh-huh. uh, how how to square numbers you know mm-hmm. so uh, there are actually uh, various techniques but i'm going to show you yes sir uh, we have a small technique uh, by which we square numbers ending in 5 okay mm. so suppose i take the number 25 okay i want to say multiply 25 times 25 mm. or say for example 35 times 35 because squaring you get the same number in the top and the bottom okay 75 mm-hmm. times 75 mm. let me take a little bigger number mm-hmm. say 105 mm-hmm. times 105 okay so that's how we're going to do it mm. uh, what comes after 2 we have 3 right yes we do so 2 times 3 6 we write here yes and then you always have to write 25 that's your answer ladies and gentlemen okay. so simple <laughs> after 3 we, we have 4 3 times 3 times four is 12. 12 and you always write 25 That's your second answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and after seven, we have eight. Uh-huh. Seven times eight is fifty-six. Fifty-six. I write twenty-five. <laughs> That's my third answer. Okay. And I take ten. After ten comes eleven. Okay. Eleven times ten is one one, one zero, zero. Uh-huh. and I write twenty-five. <laughs> That's my fourth answer. Amazing. So you see, I got all the four answers uh-huh. without any step in between because I had a superior method. Okay. So that's what we are trying to promote, you know, to the book, to the DVD. Yes. That there are superior methods that you can use mm. and uh, you can solve. Mm. Let me show you one more. You know, people of Uganda loved uh, some of the tricks I showed them yesterday. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, let me show you how simple it is to multiply numbers. Uh, with say, we can all multiply numbers from one to ten, but what about eleven? Okay. So there's a simple technique that we use. Suppose I want to multiply, say, twenty-three with eleven. Mm. Okay. or say i want to multiply 35 with 11 okay or i want to multiply say 74 with 11 uh-huh. see how fast we get the answer okay very simple you write the last number 3 as it is mm-hmm. so i write 3 over here okay then you add both 3 plus 2 is 5 5 and then i write the first number as it is this is my answer Yeah. Audience, are we yes. are we getting are we uh, so uh, authenticating these answers? Yes, okay. you can authenticate them. So I mean. here I I I write the last number as it is. I write five. Uh-huh. And now five plus three is eight. Eight. And I write the first number three as it is. This is my answer. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I, I'm giving you this example because it's slightly different, but you we need to show this to the audience. So yes. I, I write four as it is. Okay. Now four plus seven is eleven. Mm-hmm. So I write one, and one goes at the top. Okay. And the last number is seven, to which I add one. Seven and eight, seven and one becomes eight. eight. That's my answer. Wow! So you see, we can do multiply with one to ten, but even multiplying with eleven or any other number uh-huh. is simple. Uh-huh. And uh, there is that thing you do with edges. Someone gives you a number, then you're able to. Oh yes, oh yes. We have a we have a magic by uh, we use bit of algebra. Okay. Where I can tell you when is your birth date without you telling me, mm-hmm. or I can tell you how much money you have in your pocket without you telling me, mm-hmm. or uh, how many brothers and sisters you have without you telling okay. me. Okay. Yes, it's possible. I'm not gonna do the money bit of it, but. <laughs> 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 but but I, I would like us to try it out if you don't mind. No problem. Is that possible? Yes. Uh, what are the instructions of the game? Okay, so is the audience ready? Yes, so we have some people from the audience whom I met for the first time. Mm. And I'm going to tell you when is your birthday without you telling me. Okay. You just need to take your mobile phone in your hand and open the calculator app. Let me also do that. Yes, please do that. You see, algebra is taught in a very boring manner yes, in sir. school. Mm. So the same algebra we try to make it magical, uh-huh. and children love it. I mean, like when 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 I learned the magic of how to find out how much money a person has in his pocket, mm-hmm. I tried it on my father, mm-hmm. and I realized he had a lot of money. He was not giving me the pocket money that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so you come to know how, how people are really stingy, you know. Yeah, yeah. I had to be in his but, shoes. But don't but don't teach this to your wife because she's going to try it on you otherwise. Mm. So let us all try the, this this. money for a birthday mm. what you have to do is uh you have the calculator app opened yes yes okay 
So you have to write the number. You have to write one number. What number you will write? You will write the number of the month mm -hmm. in which you are born. Okay, don't show me. So if you're born in January, write one. You can show it to the camera. If you're born in February, you can write two. If you're born in March, just type three. And if you're born in December, just type 12, right? Now, whatever number you have typed, you have to multiply by two and press the equal to button, okay? Just to double it. Did you multiply by two? Did you press equal to? Okay, so after multiplying by two, whatever answer you got, you have to plus five. Press equal to, okay? Now, after adding five, you have to multiply by five, zero, 50. And press equal to. Did you get your answer? Okay. And the last step, you have to plus, put a plus sign. And now you have to add the date on which you are born. The date. Any number from 1 to 31. So maybe you are born on 10th of the month, you had 10. If your birthday is on day 25, you had 25. You add plus your date. Now you will tell me the final answer, and I will tell you when is your birthday. So the final answer is one hundred one thousand two Okay, so 10th October yes. is when are you born? Yes. It's true. Okay, let me have some people from the audience. 10th October. Yes. 11th February is your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, brother. What is your answer? Uh, no, uh, you have to check again. One second. Maybe you missed one step. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, 24th November is your birthday. Oh. <laughs> yes. 22nd December is your birthday. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes, have, you, have you corrected the steps? Okay, 9th September is your birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Patrick, what do you have? He <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> doesn't want his birthday to be guessed. Oh, wow, wow. Uh, let's try the. So uh, it's uh, the technique is very simple. Mm. From whatever answer you got, let uh, me yes. teach it to the audience. You know? Okay. You just have to subtract two hundred and fifty. Okay, from your answer, uh -huh. you minus two five zero, and you will okay. have some remainder. 250, yes. Okay, you get the remainder. Okay. The last two numbers is your date. The last two numbers is your date. Uh -huh. And the other two numbers on the left-hand side are your month numbers. Amazing. I, yeah. have, I have 1010 here. So that's 10th October. Wow, that's amazing. So yeah, uh, that, that's what you know. I'm trying to tell the world. You know, mm. algebra is so easy. It's, yes. it's magical. But you should present it to the student like that. Yes. And and I wish I wish we could all do this, but of course. So what uh, I, I imagined you had an opportunity of interacting with some of the mathematics teachers during the conversion. Where do you think the problem is? And 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 perhaps this cannot be the case of Uganda alone. I imagine it's a global issue. It's Why do the students end up hating math? Where is the problem? Uh, well, the 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 thing is, mm. the teachers here in Uganda are very enthusiastic. Mm. They are very passionate. Mm. But the curriculum is a little bit old in terms of design. And it's a global problem mm. in India mm. and everywhere. Mm. So we have a curriculum that has been designed 50, 100 years ago. We, we still teach a lot of calculus, a mm. lot of log. But now we have Google, we have calculators and smartphones. We need mm. to move for, we yes. need to move ahead. Mm. We need to move away from the road learning and more of application, mm. smart, business-oriented kind of mathematics. Mm. You know, uh, like even when I had to take a loan for my house, I, I never knew how the, the monthly installment was calculated mm. or how the compound interest happens mm. because so I'm very good in trigonometry and calculus but these were the areas where I had to learn yes. but now I realize if all that was taught to me mm. in school mm. it would have been so easy mm. so much of our syllabus is very redundant mm. and in certain countries mathematics is intentionally made difficult because it's a good business oh. for teachers and coaching classes and publishers. Oh. So they try to make it more and more difficult so that they can extract money from the students. Really? Not in Uganda, of course, but in mm. many other countries of the world. Uh, yes. And, 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 and that, that's, a, that's a big challenge. Because, because if you have fear, if you're scared of something, mm -hmm. you will come to me for learning. Yes. And that's where my business happens. Yes. Ah, you create scarcity of, yes. of knowledge in that yes. area so yes. that... People can demand for yeah, those few who are there that have the Then you can sell your books, your CDs, your yes. DVDs, your your apps for a higher amount mm. and, and, and earn more money. Because tutors in many countries, they charge mm. a lot of money for private, pri private tuitions. Yes. So if the subject is difficult, then they can command a higher 
higher amount mm. for teaching the same. Mm. Yeah. Wow, amazing. You know, uh, under normal circumstances, I've seen the world uh, selfish with their knowledge and whatever tricks that they may have in order to get what they have. But I, I think you've, you're so generous, and, and this I'm not saying only to make you happy, but it's the reality. If you're able to travel from one country to another, take care of your bill, take care of your hotel facility, and, and go and teach. You, you're a passionate teacher, uh, 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 and um, what you're doing is changing the world, you know? You're using your own finances to transform the world through the knowledge that you have acquired. So I'm very sure in our audience out there, there are people who would like to be in touch with you, who would like to get what you have. Do you have, uh, do you have some material that you can share with us or... A website that people can reach you on? Oh, yes. I have a website. It's called www.freevedicmaths.com. They can get it for free. Mm. Um, the, the book is there on the internet for free for those, those who want to download. Yes. And they can learn all the tricks. Okay. So we have been supported by a lot of uh, good foundations. Mm. The Varki Foundation is our friend from Dubai and London. Mm. And we have got a few foundations back, the Batia Foundation back in Mumbai. Mm. And I'm very happy that UMS has... Um, arrange for this visit. Mm. So now my mission is to reach out to more and more children in Africa mm. and take it all over the continent. Mm. It's, it's, it's a beautiful place mm. and I really want people here to learn. Amazing. Now, finally, uh, and this, I'll need to challenge you before the camera. Yes. We, as Cafero Foundation, love to inspire innovation. Mm -hmm. And we have a number of young people who have so many brilliant innovations out there but the challenge is in reaching them at some point. So we would like to put up what we call the Daval Bathia mm -hmm. Innovation Challenge. Okay. And in this, we have different young people from secondary schools and, uh, and primary schools mm -hmm. come up with mathematical innovations. Okay. Uh, we are working with the Uganda Mathematical Society on that concept. Awesome. Um, we need to fill our bag to award these people. Mm -hmm. What would be your first offer into the pocket for that? <laughs> and yeah. and you need to come into the country yes. and award that prize once it's uh, uh, once the winner is discovered. Wonderful. So in front of camera, I'm promising. Yes. I will come down. Yes. You go ahead. You people are doing a wonderful job. It's yes. a very good idea. Yes, sir. The innovation idea. Yes, sir. And and I think once it is established, mm. whatever best I can do from my in in in, in terms of resources, yes. in terms of geographical reach, yes. in terms of connections, yes. it's my promise I'll be more than happy and we'll take it forward. Amazing. It's unpacked and of course we will be right back. Thank you for being with us. Over 450 million Africans between the age of 15 and 25 are in line today. The problem is most of them don't realize the online opportunities that come with this digital age. So. Here's how Kaffir Foundation is solving some of these problems. We are using digital skills training to equip young Africans with tools that will not only improve their lifestyle, but also that of our continent as a whole. We look to realize the online opportunities in this digital age. Also, we teach these young people to take advantage of technology in this digital age by building their online presence, understanding mobile as more than just a tool for leisure, and identifying the new online job opportunities in this digital age. As an organization, we saw the gap in education and unemployment that we felt we could address innovatively. The education system will continue to follow today, which is exam-based or structured in nature, is not able to provide the relevant skills needed in today's industrial revolution, which is centered on digitalization. Many young startups with brilliant ideas have either died before their first birthday or rather been suspended because the masterminds behind them couldn't afford the money to maintain them or even start them and thus died the brilliant idea. So. At Kafir Foundation, we look out for angel investors, venture capitalists, and people who give grants to come together with these innovators so that they may get the funding to bring their idea to life. Africa is no doubt the largest reserve of youth who are highly skilled and resourceful, but with a large number of them lacking access to mentorship. At the Innovation Junction, we connect mentees to potential mentors who engage them on different working environments, new career paths, leadership skills, and boost their self-esteem through association. 
We want ladies to be able to build their businesses, but not only that, but also to empower them to create their own web pages. And this is through learning code like HTML. We come up against the thought that the ICT world is a male dominated era. We realize that if we need to make sure that we can support other young people was to see that they could have a platform which is very organically grown and uh, that can support them very clearly. And that's what we do here at Tafero Foundation. And uh, we're very proud of the work we are doing and uh, we are trying to spread this work across Africa. We're looking forward to see that we can transform Africa. Please come join us. Let's put our hands together to see that we can make Africa a better place. A place where innovators are growing and are thriving. Yes, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Unpacked on Capero.tv. Of course, as we normally say, we inspire innovation. Today in the studio, we have the world's fastest mathematician, okay? And uh, that's none other than Daval Batia, a lawyer by profession, a family man in his own private lifetime, and of course, a teacher who is passionate to travel all over the world and share what he has in mathematics. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the segment where we actually do ask some questions. So I would like to invite our audience out there, Daval, to engage you. Sure. And um, um, they're going to be asking you some questions. So uh, from the audience, uh, let's have some questions to, to Mr. Daval. Hi, my name is Raken. Hmm. Mine is more of, uh, I was excited about what I saw with the money. So I want <laughs> to see that again because there are very many people I want to. Yes. Try. In a good way, in a yeah. good way. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way, though. So, yeah, yes. that's, that's my request. Okay. Yeah. So, we're going to play this, this magic where I'm going to predict how much money you have in your pocket. And since uh, this video will go globally, so we'll take dollar as a common uh, currency. So, what you have to do is, again, open your mobile phones, cell phones, and you open the calculator app. And there are some steps that you have to follow. So I know, of course, you have more money, but just for, for since you are playing for the first time, we'll take a simple number. All of you, just write down one number, assuming you have that many dollars. For example, two, if you have two dollars, or five, if you have five dollars, or just write the number 10, presuming you have 10 dollars, or 20, or 50, or 100. Just punch any simple number, seven, 15. <laughs> <laughs> So, so just punch one number, okay? So, are you ready, audience? Okay. Now, whatever number you have written, you have to plus five. All of you, plus five, and press the equal to button. Great. After adding five, whatever answer you got, you have to multiply by two. Double it. Again, press equal to. So after multiplying by 2, whatever answer you got, you have to multiply by 5. Okay? Press equal to. A quick check. Is your answer now ending in 0? Yes. It must end in 0. Okay? Now, put a plus sign. And look here. You can add any number from 0 to 9. So if you like 2, you plus 2. If you like 5, you add 5. If you like 8, you add 8. If you like 9, you add 9. But not more than 9. Okay? Did you plus your number? And the last step, you have to plus 10. All of you have to add 10. 1, 0, 10. Press equal to. And now the challenge begins. You will tell me your final answer. And I will tell you what was the money you had taken in the first step. Right? So, are you ready? Yes, I am. What is your answer? 82. 82. You had taken $2. <laughs> Two dollars. Yes, we'll have people from the audience. Yes. You have five hundred dollars with you. Yes, rich guy, huh? <laughs> yes, what is your answer, brother? Thirty-eight. You need to check. Maybe you missed one step. One three eight. Yeah, seven dollars for you. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Again, seven dollars for you. One hundred and okay, eight dollars for you, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, $58 for you. That's correct. Yes. $30 for you. <laughs> 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 
All done? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and now the obvious question you will ask me, how did I do this? Yeah, what is the secret? The secret is very simple. Uh, of course, it's algebra. Yeah. You take a number, u plus phi, so it's x plus phi. Then you double it, so it becomes 2x plus 10. But forget the algebra. Let me keep it very simple for you. The secret goes like this. From your answer, you cancel the last number in the ones place. Okay? The ones place, the units place. You cancel the last number. So if your answer is 189, you cancel 9. And you deal only with 18. So with, from the remaining number that you have, you just have to subtract 6. That's it. Whatever is the remainder is the money that you had taken. That's it. So what was your answer? 82. So you remove the 2. You deal only with 8. From that 8, you subtract 6. 8 minus 6 is 2. So $2 was the number you took. Yes, it's, it's simple. But then children love it when you teach it to them in this manner. Yeah. It's amazing. Let's have another question. Well, yeah, thanks, Deval. Thank you. Uh, it's, we should say thanks to Uganda Mathematics Society for such an opportunity. We believe the young minds you spoke to yesterday didn't remain the same. It's a source of inspiration for them. Uh, my question is one. You trained as a lawyer. Yeah. Then you turned to a math mathematician. Correct. Are you carrying on both? Yes. See, uh, uh, I come from an Indian family, a Gujarati family, where we in inherit the profession and the business of our fathers. So my, my, in my family, we are all lawyers. There are 18 lawyers in the family. My father, my uncle, uh, me, all my brothers. So we had a legal firm. And right since a young age, you know, I could understand law because that is what I saw them doing day in and day out. So for me, transiting to law was very easy. But my natural gift, uh, my, my passion was towards mathematics. So uh, I try to balance both. From Monday to Friday, I am a lawyer. And on weekends, I, I, I teach. I teach to the people around in my community. And once a month, or maybe once in two months, I travel abroad. I, I take four or five days off my legal profession. I travel to one country. And our, our aim is to impact the, the education community in that country. So I have done 18 to 20 such trips in the last few years, covering 18 to 20 countries. And, and I think, I think it's, a, it's a good balance. If, if once in two months, if I take four or five days off work and travel to a new country, and then maybe in the next uh, a decade or so, we'll be covering ma major parts of the world and slowly trying to improve the system. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, as we all know, the Ugandan curriculum is too obsolete. Yeah. And um, uh, with the Math Ugandan Math Math Mathematics Society, yeah. w how are we going to transition from just an awareness program of what you're doing yeah. into action plans? How yeah. is the Mathematics Society going to help us? Because uh, we are hungry, we want to see certain things, and we can't stay the same. Right. Thank you. Yeah, that's a very, very good question that he has asked. You know, the UMS is doing great job. And now I think we're going to slowly work with policymakers. That is where is the key. Because y if you have knowledge and if you don't have the power to execute, it is as good as zero. And, and I think uh, the, the policymakers and the politicians, let this be a platform, uh, should actually even try to connect to UMS. Because these people are doing fantastic work. You need to appreciate that. And you need to give them the resources you need to you need to give them the freedom to work if you if you bind my hands there is no creativity every creativity and innovation requires support from society and not criticism so if you see some of the finest inventors in the past were criticized till that and then after 10 years society says no 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 these these were legends whom we had to respect so we always realize geniuses and uh, we can say trailblazers very late i think it's time we change the paradigm and we, the policy makers, think with an open mind, be receptive to new ideas. The world is changing, times are changing. See, when our policy makers studied in school, there was no Google. You relied on the teacher for information. Now the teacher is not the only source of information. You have a lot of technology, you have YouTube, you have Khan Academy, so we have to move with the times. So I think the policy makers and the politicians should, should support such good organizations like the, the Kafiro Foundation and the UMS. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, please, gentlemen. Um, <coughs> I'm 
I'm going to talk on the sure do side of it because I know we're all grateful to have you here. Uh, we just want to know how many times have you been to Africa? Is this your first time? or? Yeah, this is my second time. I, I've been to Mauritius before. <laughs> but Mauritius was more like a... a it, it didn't give me the feel of Africa. It's uh, Mauritius, I'd been there. We did some training uh, for the schools and the students there. But it was 10 years ago. But I wanted to come here properly in the East Africa, whether it was Kenya or whether it was Uganda or whether it was Zimbabwe. And I really wanted to understand because out, out there in, in the world, uh, because of certain countries where the political system is not good, for example, say Somalia or DRC, people have a sort of negative image of, uh, of Africa. But Uganda is so wonderful. And it's, it's the pearl of Africa. And everywhere I could see wonderful people, a lot of growth, a lot of development. It's, it's a great place with a lot of potential. Amazing people. I think if the right kind of support is given, there is tremendous potential in the people of Uganda and this country, Uganda. Okay, actually, I have four questions, if it's okay. Yeah, and uh, the next one's deeper than the last. So <laughs> okay, for starters, eh? you said you're a mathematician during the weekends and in the lawyer all the time. Yeah. So are there cases where you combine mathematics and law? Uh, uh, some of our cases involve a lot of calculation, a lot of income tax, some corporate cases of copyright. Uh, so that is where my, my number knowledge helps me a lot. But then there are certain other cases which are civil in nature or a dispute between two people where the f there is no mathematics. So it, it helps me a lot. Yeah. Okay. And um, number two, um, I'm sure you've heard of the world's fastest mathematician. Yeah. Uh, Scott Flam yeah. Landsberg. Yeah. Yeah. And um, 2009, he broke his own record where he was at the uh, at Tashi's Otonano Sonata show mm. and he broke his own record of 36 correct answers in 15 seconds. Mm. Do you have any hopes of breaking your own record? No, see, it's a very good question you asked me. Uh, I, I never claim as the world's fastest mathematician. I always call myself one of the world's fastest mathematicians because mathematics is such a broad subject. So Scott Flams could be good in something. There is Arthur Benjamin, who is good at squaring numbers. I'm good at cubing numbers. So there are number of world's fastest mathematicians, each having their own area of speciality. Like someone is good only in algebra. He will spend years mastering algebra. Someone is good in geometry. He will spend years mastering some theorems in geometry. I try to specialize in cubes, cube roots, squares and square roots. That's my specialty. Someone could be good in fractions. Someone could be good in decimals. So there is no one fastest mathematician in the world. There could be numerous, one of the fastest mathematicians in the world. You know, like, just you cannot have the best footballer in the world, but you can have a league of Messi's and Ronaldo's and Ronaldinho's. You cannot say he is the best football player in the world. But you can be in the top league. Just like you have a doctor who is the, the, who's the best heart specialist one could be the best dentist. One could be the best anesthetician. Because medicine has so many branches and in each branch we have specialists. Similarly, in mathematics, there are so many branches. So in each branch, there are certain people who are doing excelling work. So there is no superlative definition and nobody can claim, including me, that I am the world's fastest mathematician. I can be one of the world's fastest mathematicians. That keeps us humble, that keeps us grounded, and that is the reality, in fact. There be improvements to the current record that you're now holding? Oh, I work day in and day out. So I try to better my record every day. And, uh, I, and I try to work harder. There are other very fast mathematicians in the world whom I try to emulate, whom I try to follow. And when we meet at conferences, there is a lot of camaraderie. Uh, I share my knowledge, they share their knowledge. Because ultimately, we exist for the, for the goodness of the whole world. It's, it's not about being selfish. And um, my third question. What is your personal mission, both in lines of mathemati mathematics and uh, you as yourself? Yeah, uh, personal mission uh, is I want to travel all over the world and I want to remove the phobia of numbers, th the fear of numbers that people have. Because maths is so interesting. You know, it's, it's called the queen of sciences because it is accurate. It can be proved. Like uh, you may like chocolate, you may like vanilla, someone may like butterscotch. We can have differences, but two plus two is always going to be four whether it is Australia or whether it is Canada. Nobody can say 2 plus 2 is not 4. Whether it was 100 years ago 
or today or thousand years down the line. It is a perfect, accurate science. And you don't have to be afraid of such a wonderful science that is so perfect and so accurate that works all the time. Secondly, I'm also on a mission. I want to train one million girls in Asia and Africa. So I'm working towards that. So uh, through our programs, we have reached 450,000 girls in 300 schools in South, uh, South Asia, Southeast Asia, West Asia, and Africa this time. And I'm going to continue coming in Africa till we reach the figure of one million. That's my mission. Thank you. My last question. Yeah. I'm hoping that you're not superstitious. Yeah. Okay. Um, God forbid, if you were to die tomorrow. Yeah. Would you want to be remembered as a mathematician and a lawyer? <laughs> a mathematician, obviously. That's all you want to be remembered as. Yes. Okay. <laughs> or, or, or more so as a as a good, humble human being who tried his bit to 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 do good for society. Not without any labels of a mathematician or a lawyer. Uh, I would be. I would like to be remembered as a teacher, as an educationist, because that is what is very close to my heart. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Let's uh, give a hand clap to the audience that has been so engaging. Thank you. And uh, of course, another big hand clap to Mr. Daval. I'm hoping he did you all justice. Thank you. Uh, Daval, as we close, I would like to, I, I heard you were talking about the Global Teacher Prize. Uh, I'm, I'm going to request that you tell us something about it, Chap Chap. Perhaps there is uh, someone in the audience who could benefit from it. Yeah. Mm. So the Global Teacher Prize was initiated by the Warki Foundation mm. four years ago. Mm. And the Warki Foundation is, uh, is managed by the GEMS group of schools, mm -hmm. by a very visionary educationist, Mr. Mm. Sani Warki. Mm. And he saw that the status of teachers was declining all over the world. Mm. So he said, let me bring teachers to a pedestal. Mm. And the only way that you could do it was by announcing a, a, an award, mm. which was of a grand scale, mm. a, akin to a Nobel Prize for, for peace or literature. Mm. So the Global Teacher Prize is awarded by the Warki Foundation every year, mm. where one teacher mm. is given an award of $1 million. Mm to encourage the teaching profession. Oh, wow. And that $1 million is, is given over a period of 10 years mm. to the teacher to support any cause or initiative that mm. the teacher believes is good. Mm. So we have had four winners in the past four years. Mm. Uh, I'm talking in 2018 now. And we'll be having one year every year. Okay. One winner every year. Okay. And uh, my, my intention is that teachers from all over the world mm. apply for this award. It's a f you don't have to pay any money for mm. that. Mm. It's a great award, very authentic, mm. and the systems are very good. Mm. And uh, there are three stages. Mm. First, we announce the top 50 winners. Mm. And from the top 50, we announce the top 10. Mm. And from the top 10, we announce the winner. Mm. And the winner is awarded by Sheikh Mohammed, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, okay. the ruler of Dubai, wow. in the Atlantis in Dubai every year. Wow. So it... We really want to enhance the teaching profession. Wow, wow, Thank amazing. You. So I hope you've had the opportunity out there. Of course, as we close our show tonight, remember it's unpacked and it's on TV. We are live on Facebook. We are live with you on YouTube. If you're out there, you can also check out our Twitter handle at Cafero Foundation. Of course, we also have another one at TV. And this is, of course, the one show where we are hosting Daval Batia, one of the world's fastest mathematicians. Thank you. Uh, I would like you to give us some closing remarks and we call this a wrap. Oh, thank you. You know, I've come to Uganda on a small visit and it was yes. such a such a wonderful uh, place, mm. wonderful people. Mm. I, I thank Afiro TV mm. uh, for giving us this platform. Yes, you're, you're, you people are very high tech. Mm. Maybe through through YouTube we can take this, this video to the whole world and mm. the message. Mm. And I would like to thank UMS. The people are working day in and day out mm. reaching out to the interiors mm. and really inspiring students to do very well in mathematics. Mm. So my best wishes to the UMS, mm. my best wishes to Kafiro TV mm. and hopefully I'll come to Uganda very soon again to meet all of you. Mm. Thank you. Wow, wow. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Deval Batia. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Cafero.tv, inspiring innovations. Thank you for watching Unpacked.